Again, we're back here, Baseball Mapper boys, looking to do another review this week on a different uh, film we watched. We've done this in the past. If you've followed us before, you've watched a Baseball Mapper boys review of the Tecalotes. Good work. Tecalotes <laughs> de los dos, dos Laredos. Yes. Called Bad Hombres. We've done this in the past. This week, we're going to review a documentary from Netflix called The Battered Bastards of Baseball. So we want to talk a little bit about that. We both watched this, tell you a little bit about this, what it's about, and what our thoughts were, and whether or not it's worth checking out. So yeah. this one's from 2014, so it's been around a while, but it's relevant today because there's a new independent league called the Mavericks League. Yes. And named after this team from Portland... Back in the 70s. There was a very successful independent league. We found this out because we didn't know a damn thing about this before. (laughs) But the Portland Mavericks were an independent league team that was formed in the 1970s by famous Hollywood actor from Bonanza and from a lot of different westerns with John Wayne and things like that. Bing Russell, who also, spoiler alert, no, you find out like in the first five minutes. (laughs) Is also Kurt Russell's father. All right. So that's a Hollywood family. I didn't even realize the connection from Kurt Russell to his father, Bing Russell. But it's there. He decides to leave Hollywood and and creates a team in Portland after their minor league affiliated Portland Beavers leaves the area. They have an right. opening. Let's create baseball because he's always loved baseball. Right. They're the so yeah. That's a good point. He is very knowledgeable on baseball. Very knowledgeable. And so he goes there and creates the only independent team in existence at that time. So they were able to get in the, I think it was called the Northwest League, a single A uh, league. So they they were the only independent league yep. playing against all affiliated teams. And, uh, you know, their, their bonus baby um, big contract recruits. Uh, so they're playing against top talent. And to... Field this team, they had an open trial. Mm-hmm. And over 300 people came in, people like you and me, and people, old washed up baseball players. They're like, you used to play baseball right. once upon a time. I, I could still do it. Right. And so uh, they expected, I think they said 50, over 300 showed up, and they were able to uh, field a team that, that achieved uh, success. Against these affiliated teams. It's really cool. Yeah, this is... You bring up a really good point with the independent leagues. In the 1970s, there weren't any. It had gone down to zero. Teams that were not connected to Major League Baseball were none. That was it. So the Portland Mavericks that Bing Russell creates is really kind of a, a one for he can do whatever he wants. And you find out in this... This documentary, he's really kind of pushing the buttons a little bit of Major League Baseball. And I thought that was interesting because they're so good. Because the players they found who really kind of were were seeking out the Mavericks for one last chance at glory. One last yeah. chance. Baby. They weren't making good money. No, They weren't really getting, I think it was like $400 a, a month. A month, yeah. Right. So it was an opportunity to play baseball, but they fielded a great team. Put up great competition, and that rubbed Major League Baseball the wrong way. Yeah, they set uh, minor league attendance records uh, during their time span. Uh, For like four around, years in a row, right? right? So they were around, uh, you know, just a, a short amount of time, but they achieved success that, you know, was unprecedented for minor league. Really cool experience. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, the Savannah Bananas in particular, yeah, um, you know, sort of uh, are mirroring what – the Mavericks did back then in terms of making baseball fun, uh, existing outside of the unwritten rules and things like that. Um, yeah, that's a great way to put it. The bananas came to mind as soon as I, and again, we didn't watch this together, but as we kind of were watching it, we were obviously thinking the same thing. I'm watching that. I'm thinking bananas the whole time. Fun first. The fans will enjoy it. There's times where you see the Mavericks players going into the stands, sitting next to the fans, signing autographs. And these are just guys who are like 30-year-old English teachers <laughs> who used to play baseball once right. upon a time. It was it's just a cool thing to see. One of the things I really liked about it was the character development. I thought they did a great job 
drawing you into these characters. These these players were real characters. The Bat Boy was a real character. Yeah, that's a big part of why the team was a, a success, mm-hmm. and, as well as the film, was the characters in it really drove it. And um, so the Bat Boy was awesome. The English teacher was awesome. <laughs> you know, their star player who, you know, has a... Former a Major League turn. player. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so tons of cool stuff, but... You know, this ends up being um, what I view as like a tribute video. Yeah. From Kurt Russell to his to his dad. Um, you know, Kurt Russell had a big part in the creation of the league, in the running of the league. But he was he, an up and coming actor at the time. Right, but right. he also played baseball. So like everything right. that Bing Russell loved, baseball, and got into Hollywood. Kurt Russell did too, and it, we, we didn't really know that until the documentary. But you find that out, which is really cool. Yeah, I just I just thought it was really cool. Any sort of praise that may have gone Kurt Russell's way, he pushed it on his dad. Definitely, um, as sort of a tribute. I thought it was really you know heartwarming. Clearly, the uh, most important person in the interviews in the video, but definitely doesn't feel like it because he like is such a he's like made out to be a small player really is what it is but it's cool to see Kurt Russell there yeah. that's you know of course Wyatt Earp I you know I love Kurt Russell anything right. he does I love I don't know right and and so the last 20 minutes I think you know that you get several big reveals uh totally make the hour and a half uh worth it uh it was already good but right. yeah that last 20 minutes it was pretty was good really time. cool I found out a bunch of stuff that I didn't know about things I didn't think were going to be in this movie. movie you right. Know, uh, the, the Portland Mavericks have a role in things I had no clue about. So it was Absolutely. Really- it's funny to think, too, as a baseball fan, how important this independent league team was towards the future of baseball. They, they really set the table for what independent leagues in 2021 are doing right. – with their franchise, what collegiate summer league teams are doing, like the Bananas, doing with their teams in, in creating an experience just like the Mavericks had in Portland. So much so that they brought independent ball back. Yeah. And it can't be a coincidence. It worked once. Why not give it a shot again with the Mavericks League? Yeah, good luck to them. They got four teams starting this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can't afford to pay them this year. <laughs> right, so they're doing right. uh, some college players, mm-hmm. some uh, – some former to, pros. Right. Right. And uh, they're going to give it a run. I think good luck. Sounds to like this, too. Yeah. It, Battered Bastards of Baseball was worth the spin. That was a really good film. Right. I, you know, we like being able to watch these films and being able to say, you know what, is this worth watching? Is it not? We'll tell you the truth. This was a good one. Right. I think it's definitely worth checking out. It was definitely worth it. And my son, 11 years old, 10 years old, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. 11. Oh. Uh, so, um, I thought he'd be bored, but he... Oh, totally. We, it was an hour and a half movie. Right. We only had an hour one day, so we split it up. And he was kept asking me, are we going to watch the rest of it? I'm like, mm-hmm. you're not bored by this? Right. You know, because it's a lot of old footage from the 70s. I don't feel like the kids are, are that into that sort of historical stuff. Uh, he was into this movie. So, you know... I think it's got appeal beyond us old folks. Too. Right. So you heard it here first, whether you're 10 or 11, or right? In, As, in that area. <laughs> in that demographic. Or you're older baseball fans. Check out Netflix's Battered Bastards of Baseball. A lot of alliteration in there. I like that. It's worth a look. You know we're going to give a, a, another review here in the future. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, all the places where you can catch these videos. And we'll let you know whether it's worth checking out like this one was. Take care.